So I think we're going in blind today. But do you know who else went into it with things somewhat blind? The Holy Spirit. I don't think the Holy Spirit's coming into things blind. I no. think the Holy Spirit is what helps you when you are blind. Lights the way. Lights the, well, light doesn't help when you're blind. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardier. And I'm a sock puppet. And this here is Frank, a soccer dad. Normalize the soccer dad. Oh, that's true. Yeah. It's not well, just I mean, soccer, soccer mom's an insult, isn't it? Is it? It shouldn't be, but I think people say like, just like people say like, I don't want to ride, drive a minivan. It's like people say, what are you, a soccer mom? Or okay, soccer mom. I guess it can be used as an insult, but I feel like it describes like, why are you so busy? It's like, I'm a soccer mom. Well, yeah. It, it like, it kind of shows... <laughs> the age of your children that you're taking care of so it doesn't mean you're not working but it's like you can imagine i'm a soccer mom uh, i have to take my one kid to tennis for yeah. thursdays and fridays i gotta take my other kid to his crochet my son to his crocheting lessons once right. again gender normalizing his crocheting <laughs> lessons yeah seven days a week mm-hmm. eight hours each um yeah i was here for the transition yeah <clears throat> um we didn't even have soccer soccer was invented in 1982 <laughs> yeah by a man called leonardo dicaprio exactly <laughs> so look it up that's and the science so for starters soccer was unusual to american families it was and then soccer um <clears throat> came popular around the same time that parents became involved. popular <laughs> Parents became involved yeah, in children's true. lives. And, um, Before, you would just like, you would let them go and then yeah. you'd run back into them when they're 18. And they're like, right. oh, well, look, look what you've done with the world. Yeah. Before. You're, you're in movies. <clears throat> I, I saw the Titanic. <laughs> oh, Leonardo, yeah. And part of it, why he invented soccer was the loneliness of his parents. <laughs> and um, you lived in a neighborhood. I and, did? <laughs> no, people. Those. People. You, Americans. Plural. Yeah. The Americans lived in a na- lived in neighborhoods, Who does? and where whatever your neighborhood offered is what you did. So that's why I did um drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so it was tough luck if you didn't have you know. So most neighborhoods had a playground. The playground had football or baseball, and you as a child, um, I guess your mom would sign you up. Sometimes you didn't even have to pay because it was through the... Um, it's usually your two, two neighbors, two sh- doors down would be the coach. Yeah. And it was the Department of Rec um, would pay, you know, would pay for it. That's R-A-C-K. <laughs> Wait, no, that's... that's I'm, uh, I, missed, I missed the mark. I meant that's W R E C K. So you would walk out the door and you go play your sports. And then if you were lucky, somebody would watch you play the game. You know... Or a talent scout. <laughs> You're going to the big leagues, kid. Apparent. Oh. Apparently. That's where the word apparently came from. I heard that. And then soccer became popular. Like, what? Okay, I guess we're trying harder now. Then it became, how about the parents get involved? How about they come to every single practice? How about they drive you across town and you don't walk out the door to the playground? Yeah. How about they bring cut oranges? How about they, um, I don't know what they do. They go on, they go on like, Sure trips together the yeah. parents yeah uh, let's go to beach ball blast. yeah beach, right beach blast ball now, all I've, sorts I've, of swinging all sorts of debauchery <laughs> it's, a, it's a real deep underground these poor kids it are is. playing soccer in the sand oh they're just pawns little do they know that people without kids are like your are dad so sad. And, and the goalie's mom are uh so so i have a question okay i'll take your questions now thank you what's worse so back in the day you know, i know this all too well you uh, back when sports were, you know, still good child sports. Like the leather helmet. The parent, would never, the dad would never come. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, he was at work with his briefcase. No, he was getting drunk with goalie's mom. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it was, you know, it's like, oh, my dad never showed up to any of yeah. my games. Oh, boo-hoo. my dad never showed up to any of my games. You're looking around, the kid with his baseball bat. Oh, oh, he's not here again. Oh, no, boo-hoo. Or... The dad that we all learned to love after soccer became a th- not, when I said love is love to hate. Yeah. 
Raph, what are you doing? The Screaming alpha dad, pay, yeah. yeah. The alpha dad at the game. Yeah. It kind of shows you why dad shouldn't be at games. <laughs> exactly. Does it not? It, it does. It's like... Be careful what you wish for. Be careful. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's always like, you. Oh, dad should be at games, dad should be at games. Should they? Dads are at games, and then you, they only have one speed. And that's right. as if they're on the sideline of an Eagles game. Right. Cursing out. Right. All of the all of the uh, the refs. No, but it is true. Um, What's worse? I was watching some child development videos and and it talked about men and how they have an innate programming to fix things. Yeah. And so that might just be what's kicking in there. Like when you see, I know how I can fix this. Yeah. You got to turn the other direction or you yeah. have to, you know. And there's that sort of defending quality of when you think that you, when you, in your mind, everyone's perception is truth to mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. It's that your child is being wronged or yeah. targeted. So here's my thing. Let's go back to the, you know, like uh, make make sports games great again. Dads need to stop going to games. Some some dads are banned. They should be banned. Or no, you know what? They should have like a private section behind like a, a soundproof class. Oh, yeah. When you go to church, because this is a Christian podcast. It is. When you go to church, they have the quiet room. And this is a glass, but people always forget that. And there is a part of um, churches that you can see, and then the speakers bring the sound of the church into the quiet room. Oh. But we don't. So actually, we're in the quiet room if you're in the main church. Well, I think because oh yeah, I don't know. Go in there so we so we can make you quiet, so yeah. you don't hear them. Um, and so they could the, the dads or moms. There's aggressive moms, grandfathers, um, like like maybe boyfriends or you know something like that. Uh, I'm also my kids' sports. <laughs> Yeah, I meant the mom's new boyfriend. She's pretty aggressive. Uh, wow. <laughs> the mom's new boyfriend, she's pretty aggressive. <laughs> anyway, um so I think that's a great idea, yeah. Yeah. A quiet room for for the um parents who just can't behave. So in the beginning, when this was first happening, this was this was um new. This was novelty that fun. We get to be completely involved in our children's lives and not do what we're, you know, what we had been doing. And so this soccer mom was coined yeah. and people liked it because it was it was prestigious. Yeah. Number one, you had money to put them. <laughs> you had money to put the, it's yeah. true. you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're absolutely right. If you had a van, you could put equipment in it. You could carpool because once again, you're taking them out of the neighborhood. Yeah. You could pay for the sports. You could stop what you were doing. So yeah, are you, you had the luxury? You have luxury. Yeah. You could stop what you're doing and dedicate it to this child. So you were like, you I'm a soccer mom. You to leave the house? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. I'm a soccer mom. Minifans also, like what you just said, when they Mi- were invented. Minifans? Minivans. Oh. When they were invented, um, <clears throat> that was like, okay, so for all these, for all the people, except for, for me, there, there was a time before SUVs and um, minivans that were so prevalent now. Like that's kind of normal what you have yeah. now. It was sedans. And- so it was cool. It was like, wait, it's like it's like a easy to drive, comfortable. Look how much space. Brand new van. Yeah. So, so it wasn't it wasn't like it wasn't like a child abduction van. Yeah. Um, it 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 was like okay, this makes a lot of sense. I like it. Yeah. All right. You you show it off to show the neighbors. It. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you show it off to the neighbors. My van. They're like, wow, there's an extra row of seats back there and cup oh, holders. Please. It was it was huge flex. Don't even get me started when they start putting TVs in them. Can you believe it? How you done? How you done? The next phase was for people to piss all over it and say, yeah. I'm not driving. Oh, excuse me. I'm not driving a minivan. I'm yeah. not a soccer mom. I'm a cool hip person who drives a, I don't know what, a Volkswagen bug that children can't fit in or, you know. Uh, That's a, You picked the <laughs> oldest car in human history. The new one. As I know, but still, like, as your, your new spicy car you pick a car that was in world war no, II. i just i just meant like fighting small <laughs> like a sm- like no sorry i can't it's carpool day they're not hatchback. gonna fit in my car yeah yeah i drive a hatchback hatchbacks are even better yeah. to drive just an actual you know chevy cavalier is that something i don't know um, um a, a chevy a, a chevy celebrity a chevy a chevy celebrity i think that was the car we had but um and so people say, I don't want to be a soccer mom. I don't want to drive a minivan. Why? You don't love your kid and you don't like to be comfortable? Like, Yeah, it's a comfort thing. A few. I, you know what? I really think that you know when cars lean too heavy on one aspect yeah. and they get coined something, that's the detriment to them almost always. Yeah. 
like obviously yeah it was like family 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 yeah, yeah you know um it, it because then if you drove it what's the immediate thing you're saying is I, i'm not a, i'm not a family <laughs> i'm not a family <laughs> i don't want to be seen as just like a boring mom who has kids right if you weren't a boring mom who had kids right but yeah i don't know then we started seeing um let's walk down memory lane the okay. stickers that say baby on board baby on board yeah. Um, I just saw one I've, I've seen it before But I saw it again Around Christmas And it said like There's no baby in this car So feel free to just Completely hit me You know <laughs> like, Yeah that is weird I think maybe it might, like, uh, Not so much about the hitting But you know, Sometimes you can get A little road ragey Pull up and say I'm gonna drive this person Off the road Did you ever do that? No I have never done it And I've never had it done to me I never And I would rage. hope that You wouldn't do it Even if the person Didn't have a baby on board yeah, I always, I don't never care about a baby. My, I'm an empath. Don't say animal, please. Oh, no. I, I love animals and I would, mm -hmm. and I would swerve out of the way of a deer before I swerved out of the way of a, of a person, any age, any gender. I don't discriminate. <laughs> um, but when I'm driving and I get road rage, I always just picture the person as an old person. Yeah. And I get, I'm like, matter because yeah. you're like. Give your license in. No, I'm like, oh, this poor old person's trying their best. Trying to get doctors. They just want to go get some some eggs and maybe Pat food. No, not eggs. They cannot afford eggs at this point. Old people. Anyone. You know how much eggs are? No. They're five hundred dollars a dozen. Oh my gosh. There's something going on with the eggs. Everybody knows that. They're except for you. Dollars a dozen. Yeah. If my math's correct, that's ten dollars a single egg. I don't think your math no, is correct. It's not. <laughs> I think it's a little bit more than that. Um. Wow. I'm gonna start. What a time to be a farmer. And it, it not just you. Know, you don't have. You have to be a farmer. You just have to have some chickens. You just have to have some chickens. But go ahead. The poor old person who's driving the car. You feel bad. So you should. You should say yeah, no. So grandfather on board. I don't think other people feel bad as I do. Because uh, I'm like they're trying their best. So I'm like, oh, what am I? Me and I'm young and healthy. What am I rushing them for? And then I drive by them, and it's like a middle-aged person. Who deserves That's it. always, my thing is, is middle-aged, like, I, 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 old people, young people, it's always the middle-aged people that get me mad for some reason. Because I'm like, you have been, you haven't been on this long, earth long enough to like, you're just trying to enjoy every day now. And you're not new enough that I'm like, oh, they're just a kid. They don't yeah. know any better. It's like, you know perfectly well. You drive on these roads every day. How are you doing things? How do you know they're not a visitor? From another planet? No, from another thing. I didn't know names and other street signs. Listen, I don't even know if it means like baby on board, if it means the baby is in the car or it just means like the baby's in agreement to like what I'm saying. <laughs> My baby's on board. My baby's on board. Whatever I do. <laughs> right. If, I, if I'm if i not making this turn on red, even though I can, my baby's on board with it. What my baby says I do and that's <laughs> that. Enough of that. I yeah. um, hope you guys are doing well. It's another beautiful day. Way too warm. Global warming. Let's move on. It is a special day called Wednesday. Um, it is actually called <clears throat> Miércoles in Espanol. Or Mittwoch in Deutsch. <laughs> Anyone, this uh, will be under the education category of YouTube. Yeah. So sit down, shut up, and get ready to learn something. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Always. It is. Were they standing already? Well, stay seated. Stacy. Stacy. <laughs> stay seated. Yeah, I get it now. It wasn't a joke. I know. I thought you said Stacy. Okay. It is one word, word Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. So you see that? That's words. Um, what are we doing while we're Wednesday? We look um, at the playlist. What do we do? We pick a word out of the dictionary. Um, I know that obviously we are just multilingual. We're polyglots over here, but we're going to go with the English dictionary for this one and we're going to, um, talk about it. We're mm -hmm. going to just chitter chatter, um, shoot the old, um, shoot the old sheep and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, then we're going to, you know, maybe get some little spiritual significance. It looks like you have no printouts. So I think we're going in blind today. But do you know who else went into it with things somewhat blind? The Holy Spirit. I don't think the Holy Spirit's going into things blind. I no. think the Holy Spirit's what helps you when you are blind. Lights the way. Lights the, well, light doesn't help when you're blind. But your your head's in the right place. So without further ado. Who went into things blind? The people. What people? 
I don't know. All the people. Oh, I thought, like when, I thought when you they had went, someone in mind. Well, when they went into the desert, they went into it blind. Um, really everything. I mean, everything. A lot of the, every story in the Bible is the whole idea. That's what faith is, right? That one guy who was walking. I'm sure it was really dark and, and um, the, the whale and Jonah. A lot of blind. Oh, and how about just Jesus? Like he just let the blind see. One of the that's, apostles. Uh, yeah. Well, because be it's it's also the you know having blindness in your <clears throat> yeah wisdom type stuff. You know. I'm sorry. Is something more important than one word Wednesday? No, I was just looking at the little award. An award. <clears throat> War. We need a new award. You know, <clears throat> we have one hundred, two hundred. We need three hundred. What do you think about the uh, the modern day? seeing war so closely with social media seeing it so closely yeah what does that mean like, lots being po- you probably aren't on those for you pages mm-mm. lots being posted about the i kind of like it <laughs> what do you mean i've seen that i saw that growing up not there like were always this. war journalists no but this is these aren't journalists these are the actual fighters and oh. the, the drone footage where they're about to drop grenades and stuff no i don't know that i kind of like it because it is awful and terrible and not a and single you, you like awful and terrible things no i like it because i think war is, like you, you almost saying war is not glory like nothing is is nothing's beautiful about war right and it, it's like war is hell. everyone yeah war is hell everyone will come back and tell you that mm-hmm. but we even glorify that like yeah like you know, there's, but like when you're saying it you know like when everyone's like cheering at a fight yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit him, right? And then like the person's just on the ground and they're really hurting him, and it's like ah, and like everyone's like the crowd disperses. Yeah, and it's like this that wasn't fun. I wish yeah. I hadn't seen that. Right. So I think that's good because war is terrible. We're too old to be having war, and by we I mean our our, our, our minds, our, yeah, our our, our sophistication, yeah. yeah. Um. Well, hopefully there'll be an end to it in the future. Thanks, the politician answer. What is our word today? Cut this out as we think. War. No. It's just so dark and heavy and. Uh, also, I was thinking more of like war with the devil and stuff. The devil. French fry. <laughs> <laughs> we could do war. No, it's already seventeen minutes in. We'll save that for. Uh... It's heavy, unless we're doing like Coke wars or something. What is that? Like war? Wars on the cocaine trade? You don't oh, know this Pepsi Wars. Yeah, Pepsi. No, Cola Wars. Cola. Why are we naming out the brands? Wow. It's a Cola Wars. Coke was against Pepsi. Yeah, the Cola I watched, I watched Rock that, and Roll and Cola Wars. Docu- I can't take it anymore. That's the Billy Joel song. Did you watch that documentary on uh, Netflix about the um, Where's My Jet? Where's My Jet? <laughs> yes. No, what's that mean? Um, Do you remember there was a big lawsuit about Pepsi? Because in the... like late 90s early 2000s they came out with like pepsi points and there was a commercial and then oh yes the last one was a harrier jet but then someone got all the points and they didn't get the jet and they said i want a harrier jet and pepsi was like that was a joke no and you're kidding it was like there's no there was no fine print and it went like all the way up did they get it no all right so the word of the day is documentary documentary award-winning documentary because <laughs> it's not a word Documentary is not a word. Award-winning documentary. That everyone calls it an award-winning documentary because they're oh. always award-winning. They're always. I'm sure that's going because the ones you watch are, are award-winning. You think every documentary is award-winning? No, but every documentary has the chance to win an award, whereas every show doesn't have a chance to win an award. Like that's why I want to talk about it. Documentaries are so. People trust in documentaries so strongly, and they don't realize it could still just be propaganda filmed as a documentary when you say documentary it gives people confidence it gives people seriousness it yeah. gives people oh i just watched the documentary yeah. if i say i just watched bob's burgers it's like get out of our cocktail circle well just look at the words right because documentary is the idea of it is to not make a not make your own story about something right the idea of it is to just document. I get you know the best uh, like to be as unbiased of the idea yes. is and to document what you're seeing. Yes. If you are asking questions, it's to answer what you're seeing. Right. But yes, there are you can have skewed documentaries. Even for uh, even about war. You even know, about I, war. I, I saw um I saw the same the same video, child child development video I was telling you about. 
And it talked about documenting watching children. Like when you, like you want to watch them playing and just document what you're seeing and it could help you, especially if you do it and time passes and do it again because you can see changes. And it was showing you how to actually document what you're talking about. Oh. And so, you know, it, it, the first person would say like, uh, the little girl had the doll and then she climbed under the chair and she looked sad and and she didn't um, she didn't want the little boy to play with her and then she came out from underneath the chair. That's wrong. Oh. Because don't say she looked sad or she wanted the boy to play with her. Uh, to, that's what that's going to be the final analysis. To document would be she went under the chair. She had a doll with her. She stayed there for five minutes. She came back out from under the chair. So, yeah, true documentary would be truly documenting. But how could it be true? I mean, the person who's paying for it is going to skew it. Yeah. I mean, how could it be true? It, it, it could be true. And not, I wouldn't even say the person who's paying for it is trying to skew it. Right? Like, it's really like with any sort of science mod module, the biggest thing is... With a, with a study is you know you have your you have your your, your test and then you have your um, what's the word where your you, test first no where it's it's um where you have your it do, it doesn't review no there's two things and one is to just get the baseline your this is our come on help me here if you have two things okay I'm gonna okay. Um, this is just I'm gonna have just Coca-Cola where I don't do anything to it here. I'm going to have Coca-Cola where I add anaphyl where I'm add sodium chloride to this. Mm -hmm. This is my base. I know what you mean. Yeah. No. Sample? No, this is this is my I, I know, know what you sample. mean. I know, but I'm going to get this word. <clears throat> the unadulterated. Yeah, but this is beginning, one. you know, don't, okay. subject. Oh my gosh. Spencer, come on. We want science, science, science. This is my control, 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 <laughs> control your mind. <laughs> I know that. I don't really control. have to do what I'm saying. But so, for example, for war, if even if the interviewer is hands off, it's like, go f find out about that war. They go to the one side and they document. They oh, oh, we're with them. You're then learning from people. You have to kind of be omnipresent to right. to really see because everyone has their own biases. And doc I mean, I guess the only the true undocument the true unbiased documentaries are probably the nature ones, and that's why. Um, not even I'm not fully even still though. No, maybe I've seen some very hands off nature documentaries where they just let them kill each other and everything. Yeah, that's what they try to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, like, what was the, those ones that, like, was it Planet Earth, like, for a while really popular? Because, like, they came out 10 years after they started making them. Yeah. And it was, like, where they would just have a camera is just, like, right. sitting for so long. Right. And it was just, like, pure nature. Because until then, all nature was filmed with a person getting close to the animals. And right. the animals are going to interact in that way. And you already invaded on their yeah. environment. But what is this thing true? Would they say, like, if something is observed, it's already different? If something is, oh, what? I've read that. Yeah, no, there's just like the, the, science, the science thing where like they were shooting neurons at walls. And yes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's too deep and too yeah. confusing to get into. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Just the simple act of watching it changed it. Makes no sense to me. Yeah. So you, there are reputable, maybe they're the ones that are award winning. The reputable documentaries where people could really look at it and say, all right, we, we you have been presenting all the available information. You didn't try to lead the viewer, yeah. and you present it both sides. Yeah. Um, like, for example, of, of a not good one that was still popular, I guess because there was really no one to defend it, was Super Size Me, okay. my least favorite documentary of all time. If it's even called a documentary, if it's called something else. No, it probably is. Um, it's called Crap. So that's the... Um, the it was came out, I want to say, 2004 or five. It was a man who um, said, I'm going to eat McDonald's for three meals a day for 30 days and see what happens to my body. And the, uh, it was called Super Size Me. At the time, McDonald's had small, medium, large Super Size Me for 5.50 cents more. 
completely un-American because after the documentary, McDonald's got more backlash than it's ever gotten um, for you know obesity and all that. And they got rid of the supersize. That's why you don't like the documentary? Yeah, I think. Uh, oh. But also, I like. One, I didn't see it. So di- was he ill? What did he, you know? What yeah, happened? Yeah, he gained weight. He didn't feel great. His, 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 all of his sodium, like a couple things. Like one, actually an article just came out that he wasn't truthful on all the, like if. That's the thing. The other negative things. But two, also like take, you went into it knowing that McDonald's is not good for you. Right. Knowing that nobody should be eating it three times a day for 30 days. But instead of posing it like that, like, oh, just goes to show I ate way too much of it. It made it like McDonald's is bad. Right. When it's like, you could do that with anything. Like, you could you, do it with you, anything. You could do it with anything. A green drink. I, I can I can make yeah. a documentary about, I'm going to eat ban- I'm gonna eat 100 bananas a day. No, I think you would die. Eggs that, thank you. No, no, because there's something wrong. There's something in a banana that yeah, you can't potassium. have. potassium. That's yeah. what I was getting at. Oh. Point line and sinker. <laughs> yeah, you'll have and, a heart attack. And, and then it's like. Oh, like we have to cancel bananas. Right. This person made a documentary saying he's just going to eat bananas and he died. Yeah. Is that fair to the banana? It's not. Is that fair to McDonald's? It's not. I thought it brought, I mean, you know, there's, I get it. It, might, it came from a good place. No, it came from a self-righteous place. It came from a, I want to make money and be sensational place. Yeah. No, I don't think like, it was self-righteous uh, at all. No, because his wife was a vegan. Uh, <laughs> it's still just to be popular. No, I know. But I'm saying like, I, I don't think, I think. It didn't come from a McDonald's lover. That's I'm sure. Well, I'm guessing the Bible is not yeah, oh wait, videoed, we have to to that. Yeah, but it's it's a document. The Bible basically is one big written documentary. Right. And um, I think that's important to be said. Um, is it one sided? We don't get really the you know the side of Herod or the side of Pontius Pilate. You well, know. So two things. Um. I don't think. I think it's the one perfect documentary. Uh, award winning, if you will. I think the Bible is an <laughs> award winning documentary. I think it is too. Because if you remember earlier, I said that um, I said that the only way you, if you go to one side of the war, they're all going to be saying certain things. Right. You would almost need an omnipresent presence to see the whole thing. I think, you know, the Bible is directed by, uh, you know, God himself mm-hmm. or was was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so, therefore, this the sides were able to be seen. And protected, yeah. Uh, and protected. That's my belief. With that being said, you know, we always say that, that things in the Bible are um, symbolic in, in some ways or, mm-hmm. or mean something. That's what tomorrow we have walked through Thursday. That's the whole idea is what, what do we get from it? And I think it's all, it's important. It's so it's literally, I feel like explaining this is just as hard as explaining the Trinity mm. because the same way it's like you don't want to sound like a uh, uh, blasphemer um, while still trying to get your point across. Because like, I don't want to say, oh, you know, the, the Bible has or is written by humans because then you're like, but you just said it was inspired by God. And it's like, well, we live on earth. And, and so right. it is the perfect book that inside of the words of man, right, outside of what Jesus actually said, inside the words of man is God's Holy Spirit and truth. Divine lessons, But yeah. it was written by the hands of man. Right. The same way, you know, something's written by a vice reporter. And so I think it's important to see it as that. Why? Because you sometimes you can watch a documentary and get something different. You know, like you're seeing the bigger picture, right? Like you're seeing like, because you'll, you'll have wars where if you go to uh, the, the frontline person and they have an idea of the other side and they're like, Oh, they're they're the worst people. Right. They eat babies in their spare time, and right. then you, ha- you you then you hear from other people, right. and you realize his anger is because he's hurt yes. or misguided. But you need to see it all to get the picture, right? Like, and it doesn't make him wrong. It just is showing his anger. So I think, yeah, the Bible is definitely a, a, a sort of a idea of this this documentary of yeah of something. Yeah, I think it's a fair documentary because. A few weeks ago, and many times, we we talked about how it tells us the 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 unfavorable behaviors yeah. of of the people in there as well. Yeah. You know, I remember we had a whole yeah. list yeah. of David. It was yeah, am- so yeah, amongst exactly. Them. It, it's like you're seeing, like, kind of like where I said, only now are we seeing the real tragedies of war, right? To get a better picture of what war is, it's like right. the Bible is a documentary of everything, and it's like right. you see what it really is, yeah. And I guess just one more point for me is like, I think that's another thing about documentaries. It's like, 
documentaries are meant to just get you closer to a subject, right? right. Like just give you the information and it's like, but that thing's really happening out there. It's not just to like, you right. see it, but it's really out there. Right. I think the Bible too is a lot of people get stuck too much on, oh, I, I swear by this documentary. It's like, yeah, but do, are you also going as far as to be on, be going into what it, the documentary is documenting? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, and like, if you, you have to, your own stuff like how are you feeling you know someone yeah. could sell you anything but like are you truly saying like this makes sense to me or yeah. they're hiding something from me yeah you know you yeah. can you can feel people I, I said that too people discount their own feelings a lot like someone needs to tell me yeah you can feel if someone is trying to be get one over ya like Harry and Megan's documentary which <sighs> It's supposed to be telling us everything. The fact that he never ever or she never says that they've done anything wrong kind of takes away some credibility because yeah. it's like, well, that's statistically not possible. Yeah. So now, yeah. you know, that's that's usually a thing. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Well, go watch the documentary tonight. We'll be back tomorrow for walk through Thursday where we'll be going into that documentary ourselves and uncovering the truth and the secrets. <laughs> Peace. You never figured out how to be expensive. <laughs>